Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bar Tits Lab and in this video I wanted to talk about Jeff Thompson's thumbless cross or thumbless hook. Now it's something we're paying increasing attention to as a useful preemptive striking tool. Now obviously, back to basics, for those of you that think about preemption, speed is often a mandatory factor. We must get there first. It must take the opponent wholly by surprise. And in doing so, takes us from the person that might be on the back foot or the defensive into the person that's delivering offense. So being able to preemptively strike with the right timing and the right speed is critical. Now, the thing about timing, the thing about timing is about surprise. We must surprise the opponent. The person should not see, feel or sense it coming in any way for it to have the maximum efficacy, for it to do its job in the best possible way. So when we're talking about surprise, if you imagine someone like a SEAL team member, you know, one of the most experienced warriors on the planet, will have the latest gear, the latest technology, will be worth millions of pounds worth of invested training and global travel. They are top, top tier. But the element of surprise, so let's say in the bushes is a 14 year old Afghan boy with a 60 year old AK-47. But if that 14 year old Afghan boy with a 60 year old AK-47 surprises that Navy SEAL, if that Navy SEAL does not see that boy coming, does not perceive that threat, a low net worth, low training, low equipment level person can cause an awful lot of damage to someone at the very top of that combat tree. Basically, through to surprise. If you don't see something coming, it doesn't matter how strong you are, how fast you are, how well equipped you are, if your awareness is down, if your awareness dial is down and you are surprised, the person doing the surprising will often take away. So it's, it's by no accident that being first and being surprising and being unexpected are key things to work on for your combatants. And for that, speed is often one of the necessary factors. Jeff Thompson talks about when throwing a straight, so firing a cross or a hook, one of his favoured methods is to not include the thumb into making the fist. It's to counterintuitively for people that have been teaching and fighting and boxing for a long time, telling them to not include the thumb. And then what, why would you do that? Why might you consider not encapsulating the fist with the thumb and make that nice and secure like we've been doing and teaching for a very long time? Well, one of the primary benefits is that Jeff is taking a lot of his work naturally from the fence. Being able to talk, dissuade, calm down, provide physical, emotional barriers to conflict and using the fence to hopefully de-escalate or deter. But to do that, you can't operate using closed fists. You can't really maintain the sense or semblance of passivity. You can't really negotiate with your hands like so. But if you think about the necessary muscles to contract and wrap, and that actually is quite a finite skill. When you start to think about it, the ability to make a decent fist, and if you're wrapping it with the thumb, that is using muscles and tendons, and that might take time. So one of the types of punches that Jeff Thompson endorses and goes for is a thumbless iteration. So you can go from open, you can go from any degree of fence, whether it's pronated or supinated. Often we are more supinated, like so, the hand like so, when we're negotiating, when we're calming down, when we get a bit firmer, we tend to pronate, but either way, our hands are typically open. So the Jeff Thompson iteration essentially has the hand and arm very relaxed because the only important thing is the weapon line. The weapon line here is the knuckles. Yep, this centimeter is the weapon line. How the rest of the hand is clenched can often be by the by for very short distances. Now, I wouldn't recommend this for every punch in your arsenal, of course I wouldn't, but for something as a surprise, when you're going from here, experiment with the power generation you can get with not including the thumb. So going from a supination or a pronation, fire in the shot, and just get it straight on the knuckle line. 
Hop! 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 The thumb, you know, you don't need to make a big deal of flagging it out. It just needs to not encapsulate the fist. So the ability to go from here to here is very fast. There are very few tells. There are very, very, very few tells. The chances of you catching your thumb are relatively low because we're going at super short distance. This is a very, very short range shot. Bam! Bam! You know, would I be firing a thumbless shot from here? No, of course I fucking wouldn't. Because I've got this range, I've got the time to wrap it. But at this range of conflict, hum, 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 the ability to drive knuckles on target with a straight or a hook, hum, 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 hum. it's really quite good. There are very, very few chances to miss, and you can fire it from very, very surprising locations of the hand. So if you're being effusive, if you're being placatory, you know, if your hands are up, if you're talking, if you're dissuading, there are many iterations of the fence, pronated and supinated, where this shot hum, 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 can really just burst out. It's one of those things that feels and looks stupid when you're watching it. Then give it a go. Get yourself a mitt, get yourself a sparring partner, get yourself whatever you need. Remember this is super close range, super close range. Your body mechanics still have to follow through as if it was a normal hook, a normal cross. You're just not wrapping the thumb and you're trying to go from as natural of a gesturing posture as possible to fire in and crunch that shot. It can come into the body, into the jaw, Yep, there's lots of ways you can fire this shot, but it's very important. It's hyper close range. You know, you're looking about a foot and a half, typical pre fight distance. Boom, right down the center. Boom, right around the side. I prefer it in its hook firm because I tend to prefer hooks. So I can trade one inch of target for four inches target. I can trade some jaggedy teeth to fleshy padding for at least five inches. So for me, things that attack along the side have a greater target area, less chance of getting into anything nasty and turn the head rather quickly, shaking the brain, causing the knockout. But in either instance, give Jeff Thompson's thumbless cross, thumbless hook a go. There are very, very good benefits for being there first, for being there with a sense of surprise. And firing in this way is actually good way to do so with very, very few tells. So again, to reiterate, have your target relatively close. Make sure that your fence-based shadow boxing is moving. Don't just have a static fence, move that fence. Make it dynamic, make it interesting. Plead, beg, bargain, dissuade, deter. There are so many characters to play when you're working this type of stuff. And at any one moment, whoop, fire in that thumbless shot. Your weapon line is the important bit, the knuckles, boom, boom, whether it's a hook, hop, 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 or whether it's a short chopping straight, hop, hop, hop. Thumbless cross, it's fast, it's unpredictable, it flows with the motions of gesturing, and it might be your new favorite tool. Give it a play.